we had acquired an area of this farmland here on the fens adjacent to the river and some of it so we wanted to continue with the existing farming agreement but in addition to that we were also very interested in developing an area of woodland and so we planted up uh, a large part of this area where the willow is with different deciduous woodland species which will take a long time to mature and then can be sold either for timber or for various different uh, woodland uses. That will take a fair number of years for them to start to mature for that. The earliest ones will still need probably another 10 years and the long maturing ones like oaks another 25 or 30 years. But within that we were also very interested in growing some willow for uh, more immediate use in making products out of wood and particularly in relation to activities like basket making and uh, doing other large willow structures uh, like willow tunnels which some schools and colleges are quite interested in doing and it's been a bit of a learning curve growing and developing the willows in the way that we have although we have become accustomed to the best varieties to use now and how to produce them and we hope it will continue to develop a slightly different profile of wildlife, wild plants, insects and other creatures as time goes on. Well, I'm standing in front of one of the willow stools that we grow here for basket making willow. We planted this particular rose here about 15 years ago and all we used was these sticks. So these were harvested from another area, there's a, a the whole length of the stick and they're harvested in in winter time when they haven't got leaves on and usually have a pointed end so you know which way up it is and you make a hole, we had a long screwdriver, uh, cleared the area, made a hole in the ground, you push this rod into the ground till about two buds um, are left um, and then water it well, make sure you perhaps put a tree guard on it, keep the weeds away and in the first um, springtime you'll get the little leaves coming up, you'll wait till the second year to perhaps prune it so you then get branching and then after 15 years you get lots and lots of branches coming up because each time you, every year you have to cut it in winter um, so it grows up again and each time you cut it you get more and more buds coming up so you end up with what's called a stool that is a lots and lots of different stems so each year it's sort of exponential growth almost so it just keeps growing. This particular variety is a, a quite a short one we have got others uh, which can grow to sort of 12 foot in a year. This particular variety is called uh, dark dicks there's a range of dicks varieties and they have slightly different coloured stems when they're alive and when they're dead they, they kind of fade to a, um, a, like a khaki colour or a sandy colour, um, maybe slight variations, not as great as the uh, colourage colouring you can see at the moment on the stems. And then you can get um, very, if you leave it growing, if you don't prune it every year, you can get, um, there's some over there, some huge um, trees. Those are actually pollarded, they're actually cut about this sort of height, so you don't have to bend down to, to cut it all the time. We don't really want too much damage to the plants, but we can cope with some of it. On here is some green fly that are feeding on it. And then I just, a while ago, I saw a ladybird on it. We often get um, little beetles, which we don't really like because then they eat the, the leaves and they can damage the stem. So again, it's a compromise. Right, I'm brought along here to have a look at this other variety. This one, we, this one's one previous one, which was um, dark dicks, which had a um, reddish and green sort of mottled stem and this one's called Dickey Meadows and this has got a much purpler stem. As I said earlier, the, although they perhaps have a colour when they're fresh, these ones tend to just dry down to a, a sort of brownie colour. Some of the others we've got over there is a, like a golden willow and that is, as it says, a golden colour stem when it's um, fresh and uh, got water in it and when that dries it's sort of a golden brown colour so that has got a, a distinct difference in it 
Behind me as well um, are some varieties, um, that's a Jean Hautive, uh, one of them, um, and Flanders Red. Now they are now, probably we haven't cut those for, it could be like 10 years, and the reason for that is that we wanted to sell willows for basket making and these are ideal because you can see that it's very narrow stems when you soak them they can bend and make baskets nicely these ones had a much coarser stem and often were more branchy um, and even with these varieties we'll have to go through and people want a an unbranched top for their basket weaving because you have to weave the the top through the um, the uprights if you've got branches then it's not so good. You can prune them off, but then you've got all the little wounds where you've pruned them off. So if you're actually looking for a basket variety, um, you may find that even something, it depends on the soil type as well, how they grow. But these ones we found are quite good on this soil type. They do make quite nice straight uh, rods without too many top branches. I think it's just trial and error. It's like people say it's different soil types, different growing conditions, make the trees, all the rods sort of grow differently. So you have to see, but you can see how big they get. If you don't cut these down, you can have something, I don't know, they're 20, 30 feet. Um, so you have to be very careful where you actually plant your willows. Um, I think it's supposed to keep about like four meters from a drain because they will be sucking. You this, as I said, this is only a few, few months growth. So they're actually needing lots and lots of water. So these roots will be spreading out and sucking up the water. So if you put this near a house, you could have problems with your foundation. So that does need to be thought about. Within the rows, it's hard to tell now, but we had a spacing. The, the spacing is about that much apart. I can't remember the actual distance, but you need to allow for the fact that although you put that one stick in, it is going to spread out. You don't want them growing into each other. So I think it might be half a metre. I can't remember now, but don't cram them up unless you're actually growing like a willow structure when you want them all to be weaving into each other. Right, this here is one of the osiers that we're growing. This has been not cut for probably about three years now. So you can see that the thickness is about that much on that stem there, sort of broomstick thickness. But there are still within it some younger shoots. There's one, I don't know if you can see this one here, which actually we were cutting off the other day because we wanted the length of it and we're going to be using the other end of it to um, cook sausages on. You just strip the bark back on the willow so there's a nice clean end to it. Um, and then you put the sausage on the end. So that's one thing you can do with the willow sticks. So even within one year, this will have grown up to about 12 foot. This particular variety is, is we found was very good for living structures because it didn't have so many branches. Quite a lot of the uh, Vimanadis we've got further along here, they were just branching too much. And usually people just want one long straight rod that they can put in the ground and then perhaps arch it over or weave it in to make a, a structure. So as I said earlier, you do need to make sure that you, you know the right type of variety and the right species that you're going to be using for your type of environment. The other thing I was standing here for to show you is you can just about see hanging on these trees, these catkins. Now these are the fe female catkins, I think, um, and they've got lots of white fluff on them. And that white fluff is so it can blow away with the seed and then start a new tree, which is something you need to be wary of um, if you're actually, there's a less mature one, is if you're actually um, not gonna take care of, of where you're planting it because you will get willow growing up other places. These seeds will fall. If you look down the riverbanks often, you'll see where seeds have blown along and just germinated in the, in the sides of the bank. This is showing you some of the things you can make with willows and willow crafts. Um, you can work with green willow. Now, now in June, and it be, the willow will be too whippy, too soft to be able to work with. This is some willow that we cut in February and put it in a bucket um, to keep it growing. So that's why it's got the leaves. So it's a, still, it's quite um, firm, uh, but it's actually got a sort of a bark, but it's still supple. So. You can see this willow bends quite easily. If you're going to be working with green willow or indeed with the dried willow, you need to sort of make it a bit supple. So you can see I'm put running my thumb along it. So not to actually bend it hard, but to just sort of, in a way, sort of break, not sort of, I don't know, soften the fibres. You can feel it happening. So one minute you've got a stiff stick and next minute you can see it's getting a lot more bendy. So when you've got that, you can make what you want with it really. So. You could, if you take the leaves off, obviously, 
make a bend it round and make a, a wreath, something like that. And then you'd get another one and then you'd, this one's a bit fatter, but so if you wanted to, you could make another one, bend it through like that. So you've got a wreath like that and so on. And then you can put flowers around it. Or the other thing you can do with these, for example, I've got some examples down here, is you can make fish. So you can make a little fish and you can put it on a string and on a rod. Um, these ones here I've got are made in two different ways. This one is made with willow, so you need a very fine willow to be able to weave through here. And these ones are made with willow bark, and I've got some willow bark here. So this was stripped off um, some green willow last year, and I've soaked it overnight, so it's it's got, when, I, when I've soaked this, it was actually dry and crisp, and now it's soaked and it's all soft, so you can use it for binding. So if you were going to be making a willow fish, you'd get a piece of willow and you'd bend it like that and you make the front of the fish. You can then tie it up with some string or some bark at the end, and then you can start weaving through. So this is obviously a long bit here. It might be best to deal with a, a smaller bit to start with. So then you weave it through, so you've got your, your tail end of it. So you've got the two sides to it. You may want to sort of display the, the white side. So you go like that and you weave it through and so on and so forth. So it's trying to keep it tight to where you've started to, to weave it. So you then do the same up the, the nose end and then if you leave it to dry you can see that this is quite durable it's not going to come apart and you can keep that forever and ever effectively so as well as fish you can make if you're you know once you get get going you can make baskets or you can just make say the bottom uh, as a coaster to put things on so when you weave you have the, the sort of the uprights and then you have the weavers that go in between something else you can make other than fish is I showed you that sort of wreath. You can imagine if you do the bend the willows around two different ways, then you can end up with a, a heart shape. Um, you can also make stars and anything really that you can make with wire to some extent. But otherwise you can have a whole range of things. You don't need plastic. You can make lots of things out of willow and they'll last for years and years and years. But this is, uh, as I said earlier, this is June, so it's not the time to cut willow. But we're talking now about sort of later in the year. This is a, a dried willow from the harvest last year. So this will be harvested as soon as the leaves drop, sort of eight, later and year, later it seems to be, but you maybe can start in December, then you've really got to be stopping by early, early March. So this has been dried and you can see it's probably about seven foot tall. So this would be an average sort of height willow for a salix purpurea, one of the thinner willows. And you can say even the butt is perhaps no thicker than a pencil, whereas it's quite thin all the way up. So you need all of this length for your weaving. If you have a short one, so if you just cut off that top bit, then it's gonna be more joining up. And the joining up is a bit of a, a nuisance with things because you've got to wiggle, wiggle it in and, and make sure it fits and everything. So the longer, the better. So clearly the way you do that is make sure when you harvest, you go right to the base of the stool. Now, as I said, this is the wrong time of year for harvesting. This will grow another, probably another, at least another foot, and it will harden up. Not hard like the dry one, but you'll get a bark. You won't be able to sort of, this one I could probably just break with my fingernails. You won't be able to break it with your fingernails. So you have to, when you harvest, go into the bottom of the stool. So you need to find it. So you need to make sure there's not weeds like that, cleavers in there and go right in and use probably normally if you're doing a lot of it you use long handled loppers and usually you sort of sweep it back and find the base and you can see maybe maybe later with a close-up you can see the old cuts from previously so you go right to find the base of the the new stem so it's a bit confusing with all the cleavers here so you find the right to the base to where the the old wood is and then you just cut it off. So I'm not quite sure how this one is, but when you're harvesting, you usually cut the whole stool. So right to the base 
and you've, so you've got a, as long as length as possible. This is obviously a too short one, but if you were doing this in December, this would be the whole length. So you've got the, the butt and the tip. Sometimes you'll find that the, the way the plant grows, it'll be curved at the base. And really when you're weaving, you don't want a sort of a very sharp angle. So you may have to trim them again later, but that's okay if you harvest right down to the bottom. Some nice aphids on there actually. So the, the wildlife is thriving on this one. I think in the case of Ely and where we are here, the river forms a very good communication medium in that respect. And if different parts of the river banks could be enhanced to develop ranges of plant material uh, and wildlife biodiversity, that would be a very good development to pursue in relation to that. So for me, I think that's one of the more straightforward ways of enhancing communication corridors for biodiversity.